So welcome to Technodad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, we're going to be installing OMV on a Raspberry Pi with a script. And so what we'll have to do is download the Raspbian Bear uh, one without the GUI, and then we can install it. Uh, two things about this at least. So one is your Raspberry Pi will get very hot. And so again, I suggest you get one with a uh, fan, a case with a fan attached or have your case open doing this. And I guess it has to do with salt, which is uh, the uh, image has changed over to salt base. So that's partly why there. And the other thing I can't think of right now, but anyways, you have a great day. Hope you like the video. If you like it, make sure you like it and you haven't already subscribed. And here we go now. And a special thanks to all my patrons who without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. Thank you. So what we'll need to get started. So first we need to go downloads on the Raspberry Pi page and scroll down to Raspberry and Buster Lights and download that. The download zip takes a long time. So if you have a torrent client, I would suggest doing that. Next, what you'll need to do is download and install Bella Anna Etcher. And so this will burn our image to our SD drive. The next thing we'll need is a SD card, our micro SD card. And depending on if you're going to be using this for Open Media Vault, you don't actually need a large one. And so here, a 32 gig, gigabyte uh, SD card was only $749 and so that's a great price actually uh, their sd cards are getting bigger and cheaper and finally you'll need a raspberry pi 4 and i like this kit because it has a fan it has the power supply it has the hdmi micro hdmi connection has the on off switch and the case guide and heat sinks along with the Raspberry Pi 4 and if you can afford it it's only uh, I wouldn't suggest getting one gigabyte of RAM at least two but four if you can get it it's only ten dollars more so once you've downloaded installed Bella and Etcher and then uh, Raspbian then the next step will be burning the Raspbian to your SD card so let's do that so the first thing you'll need to do is click on select image and so we're going to Raspbian Buster Lite then click open. Now we're going to install our SD card and there you can see it automatically detected it and then we're going to click flash and this will take about 15 minutes to flash and confirm it. So once that's done flashing you can close that and then just pull out your SD card. Uh, Etcher automatically unmounts the SD card. So, so next what we're going to do is we're going to install the SD card in the bottom there and then plug in all the cables and it will start up. So login is pi and the password is raspberry and of course you have to type that correctly. Next we're going to type in sudo raspy-config and so why we're doing this is we want to enable uh, SSH so we can use our desktop to access the Raspberry Pi then hit enter and then we're going to go down to number five so tab down and we're gonna hit enter and then we're going to go to tab down to F2 which is SSH, hit enter, and then tab over to yes to enable the SSH, and then enter again for OK. And then we're going to tab to finish, hit enter, and then we're going to type in clear, and that will clear our screen. And now we can go to our desktop and log into our Raspberry Pi.
So next what we're going to do is enable SSH. And we're going to type in sudo systemctl enable SSH and hit enter. And then we're going to type in sudo. And the next we're going to type in sudo systemctl start SSH and then hit enter. So next what we're going to type is ifconfig and then hit enter. And here under, you can see under ETH0, it says inlet 192.168.8.148. And so that's the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. So the other way we can find our IP address is if we go to our router and look for the Raspberry Pi. And so here you can see mine is 192.168.8.148. And then for this next part, we're going to be using PuTTY. So if you don't have it downloaded already, you can go to putty.org. And this will let us SSH into our server. So download that and install that. So once you have PuTTY installed, we are going to go to GitHub Open Media Vaults dash plugin developers install script blob master readme.mdd and so this will is a script that helps us install open media vault and all the extras at the same time and so what we need to do first is open putty and then put the IP address that you got earlier in there and then click open then click yes here and then log in as Pi and Raspberry. Hit enter. And so for the Raspberry Pi, we actually don't need to do the first line of the script that I've seen so far, but let's just see. And then we're just going to copy this, paste that into PuTTY, and then hit enter. And then it will take about a half an hour to install Open Media Vault, and we'll just skip that. We'll skip ahead here. Once that's done, you can actually just close that and click OK. And now we're going to go back to our router. I can double click on that and click go to the thing. And so here the username is admin. And the password is Open Media Vault. And then click Login. Okay, so once you're logged in, you want to change some settings. Click on General Settings. And we want to click Auto Logout to one day. And then click Save. And that will keep your machine from logging out uh, every five minutes, which is very annoying. And then Apply and Yes. Next, we're going to go to Web Administrator Password, and we're going to type in a new password. And then click Save. Next, we're going to check our time and dates. And so my time zone is wrong. And then it should update automatically. And then we'll click Save. And then Apply and Yes. OK, so next, we're going to go to Network and to Interfaces. And so if you don't have an interface here, what you're going to do is click Add, and then Ethernet, and select a device, and Ethernet 0. And then we're going to go down to IPv4, click DHCP if that's what you have. Most people will have that. And then for DNS servers, we're going to type in 8.8.8.8, .8 and then click Save. And so this will save us from having a few problems later uh, if for some reason the DNS server is, does not come up then uh, if you've done this already it, that just won't be a problem in the future. And so then we'll go to update manager and click in that box right there so that will select all and then upgrade. Once that's done click close. And so we're going to skip plugins for right now. 
But if we scroll down, you'll see that it installed the flash memory plugin already, and then it also installed OMB Extras. And we're going to skip that right now, too. So next, what we need to do is plug in a hard disk. So I'm going to do that right now. And we're going to go to disk, and we're going to click scan. And once that's scanned, the disk will show up, and we're going to wipe that drive. And yes, and quick. Then click close. And then we're going to go down to file system. And we're going to click create and select a drive. And our new hard drive. And we're going to call this data disk. And then click OK and yes. And then once that's done creating the file system, click close. And now you can see there is our data disk. And so we highlight it. And then we want to click Mount. And then uh, Apply and Yes. And then next we're going to scroll down a little bit. And so we have our file system. The next one is Flash Memory. And so the script that you did at the very beginning uh, automatically installs Flash Memory. So it is activated and you don't need to do anything here. Next we're going to go to user and we're going to add a user and just put in your name and then you have to have an email address and a password and then next we're going to click on groups and so we're going to add and so we're going to add this to a few groups so we're going to scroll down so we're going to give Samba Share <coughs> SSH uh, sudo for this and then we're going to click save and then apply and yes so next we're going to add a shared folder so we can access our data off of our server we're going to call that data for this folder put it on our disk and we're going to do this simple everyone read write and then click save then apply and yes. Now we're going to go down to Samba, SMB, and we're going to create a share first. So we're going to add a share. We're going to select our data folder. We're going to allow guess, and then we're going to enable permission inheritance and click save. And then apply and yes. And then we're going to go back to settings, and we're going to enable the Samba share. Make sure your work group is the same as on your <clears throat> local network. Then click save and apply and yes. And so next what we'll do is go to our local shares on our Windows machine. And here you can see we're on the networks tab. And there's our Raspberry Pi. And we're going to click on that. There's our data folder. And let's create some folders inside of that. And there we can see we have read write access, so we'll close that. Now we're going to scroll back up to the top, go to OMV Extras. So now our last section, but not our least OMV Extras, so we click on that. And so you're going to see there's a number of different things on here. And so we're going to go through these bit by bit here. And so the first thing is we're going to click Extras Repo, and that will enable the OMB Extras that aren't automatically installed with the script. So this next section right here, it says Docker Storage. And so basically, this will store things on your SD card, but we can change that in the Docker when we write it, but this when we install Portainer or Cockpit, it will go in this. So then once we've done that, click Install Docker. Once that's done, click Close. And now you can see that it's installed and running. And so now we're going to go down to Install Portainer and click on that. Once that's done, click Close. And then you can click on Open Portainer Web Interface. And here you just need to put in a password. 
twice. Click create user and then click local and then connect. And then to go to containers, click on local. And now over here, if we want to add or remove any containers, we do it here. Portainer is a container, so it's already running here. So we're going to close this. And you can also install cockpits. So we're going to click install cockpit. Once that's done, click close. And then now you can see it's stalled. Oh, and not running. And so we're going to click up open uh, cockpit web interface. Click on advanced and proceed. And so here uh, we can log in. And you notice it says log in with your server user account. So that's why I typed in my name plus the same password. And now we're logged in. And so again, we can now look at our system. So we have four cores. Uh, it shows us how much memory we're using, our disk in and out, and network traffic. Also, it has logs, containers, accounts, services, applications, software updates, and terminal. And so that's the basics of installing OMV5 on a Raspberry Pi with the install script. Have a great day. Bye-bye.